Hello and welcome to El Perspective. I'm El Black. And I'm Jennifer. So, you know, we're going to jump right in. Um, I never talk about what we're going to, I never say what we're going to talk about in any episode and this is no different. So we're going to jump right in. So um, there's been a lot of movies this year and a lot of television shows. Um, I guess sometimes you're a prisoner of, of the moment. But I guess if I had to say what was the best movie of the year for me, I mean, it definitely would go <laughs> to Black Panther. But that's for many reasons, for what it represents. Um, but there was other, some other decent movies that came out this year that were really good, too. Uh, most of them were were black movies to, for me. Um, that's where I put my dollars this year. Not to say I didn't see Mission Impossible, which was really good. Um, and, and, and a couple of the movies that I found to be interesting and, and fun. What about you? Uh, Black Panther, definitely the best movie of the year for me, for sure. Um, I also really, really, really enjoyed um, the Lady Gaga movie, A Star is Born. Um, well, I, I couldn't tell you cried the whole time. So. <laughs> that was I. Uh, that was I love a tearjerker in that movie was the most I've ever cried at a movie. Um, did enjoy the hate you give in, I'm trying to remember other movies I saw this year. Um, Mission Impossible, I thought was a little too over the top for me. But you said you liked it. Uh, I was, it was okay. It was, got to be a little ridiculous. I was like, okay, somebody needs to die already at the end towards, but yeah. So, um, but definitely by far Black Panther, best movie for me. Well, I mean, for Black Panther, I mean, everybody, I mean, most people, the critics loved it. It, it. it did well on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff like that. But, I mean, of course, I mean, it's black, black director, black, you know, lead, um, goes to a lot of money, but just made black people feel good. And any movie can make black people feel good and dress up and all that. Absolutely. I mean, Black Panther was an event. Yeah. It was an event. I had my daishiki dress on. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely was an event for black folks, I think for sure, because not only um, was it such a a positive representation of black people just in general, but like, honestly, the most feminist movie I think I've ever seen in terms of like strong women who were strong characters, but were, I mean, the most intelligent woman in that entire universe is like a 16 year old black girl. That's amazing. But the only thing is, so the star, you know, of it, um, he wasn't my favorite character. I mean, mm-hmm. um, Killmonger definitely by far was my favorite character. It wasn't even close. And even when he was, he was a little bit wild and a little bit crazy, but his thoughts I thought weren't, weren't too out there. Yeah. Like, uh, I think Killmonger is definitely not, um, the bad guy, the evil guy, or however you want to put it. Um, You know, Killmonger is definitely his, a lot of the thoughts that he had were not evil or bad or anything like that. And in fact, I would, you know, towards the end, we see that um, T'Challa, he definitely, he becomes more in the middle of their ideals. Um, You know, he's not on the extreme end that he was. He comes a little bit more closer to, um, Killmonger's philosophy and, and point of view. My favorite character in the movie is the sister. Definitely my second favorite character because yeah. he he goes lower on my list. Oh yeah. Um, she probably was. She probably was my either my second favorite character, or, and I can't remember what character she played, but the girl. Oh Gar- yes. I think it's that deny. Yes. Yes. The head of the head of the warrior ladies yeah yes yes she's an awesome yeah, i love awesome. her in, in everything she does Absolutely. Like every time i see her i'm i like have a crush on her she's awesome and yeah. everything i've seen her in um her character was awesome probably I think a, second or third a movie just about that warrior group of women would, would be a dope I'd, movie i'd, I'd be, right, I'd be i would be right be, there i'd be first in line right, exactly anything wakanda right now i'd be first in line and this is talking now where this is December. I mean, we came out what, in February or something? Yes, like? February. So it's been a long time and I still feel exactly the same way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For sure. 100%. Um, so there the, are a couple of movies coming out 
now, which I think might be contenders. Um, that um, the movie about the James Baldwin, based off the James Baldwin book, if Bill Street could talk, that's supposed to be a really good movie, but it's not out yet. So reserving judgment. Yeah, left to be seen. Um, the Hate You Give. Mm. <laughs> I wanted to love it. I definitely wanted to love it. I wanted it to be an extreme tearjerker like um, A Star is Born was for me. Like I wanted to cry that entire movie and was a little disappointed that it wasn't this like extreme tearjerker for me. And the movie was a little all over the place. So. So I think it was based on a book and that's why. But but yeah, it was a mess. I mean, I support movies like that all, all day and night. Um, but it was a bit of a mess. Um, I, now, are you coming, I like aspects of it. Right. Like, but let me ask you this. Are you coming from, you have a background as a filmmaker. Are you coming from that background or are you coming from a consumer entertainment background when you say that the movie was a mess? Um, I think I'm coming from the background of being a filmmaker. Okay. I think I'm looking at it from that because of the point of view I've got from a lot of people they love it. They think that movie was fantastic. I mean, it had great um, ideas, but it, was, it wasn't executed well. Mm. Another movie that was similar to that was The Black Klansman. Great idea. Oh, yes. That was a good movie. I enjoyed that as well. Great idea. Yeah. Mediocre movie. I don't know. I mean, I thought it was okay. And it's Spike. And I absolutely love Spike. But the last several movies he's made were absolute messes. Most of them. This one was okay. Mm. I really en- I forgot I forgot all about the Black Klansman, but I actually um, I did enjoy that movie. Again, another one that I I anticipated enjoying more than I actually like. I did. wanted to enjoy. Yeah, that like one. I yeah. wanted to be like, oh, this movie is so. That's how I felt with the Hate You Give. Like I walked into that movie like, this is going to be a dope movie. It's going to be great. Um, I I like that little girl that's in the movie. I don't remember her name. I like her. Um, you know, I, I thought it was going to be this like super like Black Lives Matter, like super woke statement movie slash a tearjerker. And then I was like, wah, wah, wah. Basically, yeah. um, another movie like that was A Wrinkle in Time. Oh, I didn't see that. Wanted to like it. Wanted to love it. I love Ava DuVernay. Never crush of mine. I love Ava DuVernay. And it's a bit of a mess. Mm. I mean, I'll definitely give her another chance. It's Ava. Um, and I love her. But a bit of a mess. But if we're going to be honest. What? Love me some Oprah. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves Oprah. Love Oprah. But other than the women of Brewster's Place and Col- Col- Color Purple. Color Purple, yeah. Oprah has not been in a good movie. She doesn't do that many movies. You think about yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean, like, eh. I get like Beloved. Wanted to love Beloved. Beloved was okay. I, I thought eh. it was pretty good. I, I, I like Beloved. It's not a movie you want to watch again. Like, yeah. if you watch it once, to me, it's like Precious. You watch Precious mm. once, you don't watch Precious again. More, once is more than enough. With yeah, Precious. yeah. Good then, movie, but it was just... Beloved is yeah. that kind of movie for me. Mm. It's like, it was pretty good. It, it was entertaining. Don't want to see it again. Mm. Okay. Definitely for coming on, I'm not really that, oh yeah, I gotta go gotta watch that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some scenes in there were painful. Which I'm okay with. I'm okay with movies being painful. Yeah. You're supposed to elicit some type of reaction from people, but I just, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that kind of thing. Um, I know you absolutely hated Sorry to Bother You, but that also came out this year. See, a lot oh. of, this is a, this is a good year for black movies. A lot I of didn't know that out. movie, because I watched it on Netflix. I did not know that that movie, or whatever stream Came out service. this year, yeah. That movie really bothered me a lot, <laughs> because it was one of those movies that was like, I'm an artsy indie movie, and let me just show you how artsy and indie I am. So, okay, I'll ask you the same question you asked me. Are you looking at it because you're just a consumer of, of media? Um, Yeah, I mean, that's the only, that, I mean, unlike you, that's the only way that I can look at a movie is, was I entertained? Did I get something out of it? You know, sometimes did it make me think, was it, was it provocative? Was it thought provoking? And yes, it was all of those things. But I just think that it tried way too hard. There was no, um, nothing was subtle about the movie, down to the earrings that the 
the girl wore. Nothing was subtle about the movie. It was Tessa Thompson. Yeah. yeah again, and eh, eh, well, uh, what's your problem with Tessa Thompson? Uh, I think Hollywood is trying to make her into like I, I, the next black it girl, and I, I actually like her. Uh, I, I would give a movie really, another chance if I see that she's in. I'm it. just not really. She just is another bland, mediocre at best, but beautiful light-skinned black woman who Hollywood wants to uplift. Like the little girl on black on blackish. Oh, that, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, about, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know who I'm talking about, right? Exactly talking about. Or even the girl from the hate you give. You know what I mean? They're all these like um these like biracial wonder kid Wrinkle, wrinkle in time. Uh, it girls who Wrink, wrinkle right, in time, same right, thing. Yeah. Who Hollywood has chosen to uplift for whatever reason and eh, beautiful women. Talented actresses, eh, I don't know. Mm, okay. Uh, I, <laughs> okay, that's fair. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to dispute yeah. that. I had a different take on Sorry to Bother You. I actually really loved it. Um, in but, watching it the second time, I could see what you're some of the things you're talking about. Why did you? You loved it because it was so different. Yeah, as a filmmaker, okay. if this was my first movie, I'd be very proud. Okay. It, yeah. I, I probably wouldn't have been as heavy handed with some of the choices he made. Yeah. Um, <gasps> You know what movie I did like? The movie that we watched about um, the kid trying to be a rapper? That was cute. Which, oh, oh, yeah. It's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm now forgetting the name yes, yes. of the movie. Yes, Um, With the kid Kyle, right? That's yeah, Kyle, Kyle is his name. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. That movie was... That movie was I right. enjoyed that movie. Yeah. I enjoyed that it, movie. It did what it was supposed to do. Yes. If I went to the movies to see that... Oh, I'd be even, mad. I'd, I'd be mad. I'd be mad. But sitting on your couch watching a Netflix... Netflix movie. Eh, yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely worth watching. Yes. Um, Another movie that I really liked, Netflix movie, Dumplin'. I, 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 I didn't see it. I know you didn't see Dumplin'. I loved this movie. Again, I love a tearjerker. Dumplin' definitely had me in my feelings for a little bit. Because, you know, just, ugh, I loved it. I really liked it. I really enjoyed that movie a lot. Not okay. a black movie, but I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, so now we only talked about mostly black movies, so I'll talk about Star is Born. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I didn't, I went with no expectations about it. Yes, The exactly. music is definitely not what I'm used to, but enjoy the music. The Have Queen the movie. What? I know, I'm, I'm, I'm distracting you. The Queen movie was excellent. The movie about Freddie Mercury. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that right okay, after. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, go so, ahead, go ahead. You so, said music and it jogged yeah. my memory. So, yeah, so Star is Born, you know, I liked it. I I, I enjoyed it. Um, country Western singer is not really my, my cup of tea. Yeah. But it just was a good movie uh, on face. It just was a good movie. It was well done. It was well acted. I, I enjoyed it. I um, loved it. I wasn't crying, but you know, a couple times I would get a little... <laughs> You know, teary-eyed. yeah, a little teary eyed. It was it was well done. Yeah. It was well done with the music. The soundtrack is good. I downloaded the soundtrack. I played it mm-hmm. in my car. So, mm-hmm. hey, you can get a hardcore, you know, hip hop head, R and B head to listen to like country music. Hey, and it's interesting. As a musician, I do not particularly care for Lady Gaga. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really listen um, to music like that. You know, I, eh, I mean, her songs. I mean, I, w- I won't change the radio station if one of her songs comes on or anything like that. But I'm not like a Lady Gaga fan. I don't. I w- wouldn't download her any of her music or anything like that. But I really loved her in this role, and the ending of that movie was just a total gut punch for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I had never seen any of the previous versions of I heard the movie. It's just like the other ones, I said. I didn't right, see any I, have, I haven't seen yeah. any of the other yeah. ones, so I um, wasn't at all expecting the. En- well, I mean, you kind of start to expect the ending, but I really wasn't expecting the ending. And um, like the women in the ladies' room after the movie, we had like a little mini support group, <laughs> like <laughs> like like a grief circle. Um, you know, I think we were just all like devastated by this movie and um for me i mean i I just it was so good i loved it no i i thoroughly enjoyed it too um didn't enjoy the service we got at the movie theater we oh it was like one of the movie theaters where you go and you get food and all that stuff um i'm not gonna say the name of the movie theater but I mean, we literally took about halfway through the movie. I didn't get my I didn't get my chicken yeah. sandwich until about halfway through the movie. I was. I like, think what 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 killed them was that we had been to a similar establishment at Disney uh, and we had went gotten to Disney and had yeah, gotten the yeah, Disney yeah, yeah, yeah. service. So that made 
comparing anything to Disney quality shout service. Out, shout out to Disney. Shout out to Huge. <laughs> yes. We would love to come back if uh, we would do a podcast. Um, <laughs> shout out to Disney. <laughs> um, but we had gotten such impeccable service at that establishment that, that the, other, the second establishment in comparison was just not a good experience. Okay. But okay, a, so, so a great other- idea. I would love to see more of these theater, cafe places. Oh, right no, no. Yeah. Definitely, definitely awesome idea. Um, so the other movie you said that you you wanted to yes the Queen movie Bohemian Rhapsody Bohemian Rap Bohemian Rhapsody Bohemian Rhapsody um, loved it loved, loved it. it absolutely um, of course familiar with Queen's oh, I love music Queen, Queen music yeah, yeah. Um, wouldn't say you know Queen was a little bit before my time so I wouldn't mm-hmm. say I was a Queen fan. I wasn't either. This is something I discovered um, later on in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, but maybe, definitely familiar with all their music. I, I didn't get into the music until the '90s and stuff. Um, right. Knew the Freddie Mercury story about him having HIV and dying of AIDS. Knew that part of his story, um, and knew that he was of some non-white extraction <laughs> um but Not that's that's really the only part of his story that i knew so um seeing his whole life story i, I absolutely thoroughly enjoy it but i also love a biopic love particularly a musical biopic love a musical so this movie was right up my alley really really enjoyed it a lot uh, i mean movie. i can't say enough about the movie either um well done um ryan <sighs> Malik, whatever. I, I was, Rami. Rami Malik. I'm like mm-hmm. mispronouncing his name. Um, and I don't keep notes in front of me. Everything comes out of okay. my head. So um, He was excellent. Rami Malik from Mr. Robot. <sighs> Killed it. Killed, Killed it. it. It kind of reminded me of what we've seen like with Jamie Foxx and, um, yeah, and Ray. Ray. Like, yeah, we're yeah. totally embodied Most, yeah. the character where you almost... You really think you're watching the actual person and yeah. not someone portraying them as a character. Excellent, excellent. Definitely, character. definitely great performance, great music. Yeah. The only criticism I could have ha- actually had is that the scene at the end where they're doing the concert was a little long. But other than that, mm. I think I enjoyed every every part of that movie. Um, any other movies that you uh, enjoyed this year? Any the thing, things you want to say about movies? I can't that you even like remember most of the movies. movies. I, I can't remember most of the movies that I've seen. Yeah. Oh sure yeah. <sighs> you forgetting one movie? What movie? Uh, the 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 one we saw at Disney. What did we see? At Disney? Oh, the Crazy Rich Asians. Can I just tell you how much I loved this movie? I loved the Crazy Rich Asians on so many levels. One, I love a romantic comedy. Um, I love like a grand romantic gesture in a movie. I um. But what I particularly loved about this movie was that it was Asian people just being people, you know, and I think that that's something that that I know I've never seen in a movie, Um, you know, save for maybe like the Joy Luck Club 20 odd years ago, where and the one thing that I've never seen in a movie ever is an Asian man allowed to be a sex symbol. And I think this is something that I particularly loved about this movie. And the cool thing about it is um, that evening we had been at an Asian restaurant and in the ladies room, they had all of these pictures of like Asian men, you know what I mean? Like kind of like hot Asian guys. And I just, I just love that this movie kind of continued that theme of this is the first time I know, maybe other than that movie with Aaliyah in it, Romeo Must Die, that I can remember the Asian guy being allowed allowed to be the sex symbol, you know, no, uh, or allowed to be portrayed as the object of desire and maybe there are other movies out there that do that but i can't i can't remember a mainstream movie in my lifetime i know i've never seen a romantic comedy with an asian lead in see it. I, I i like that that they had every different type so it, was, it wasn't really stereotypical because they had all these different types of asians yeah every different type of that's the thing that's yeah level of absolutely success or not success and it could have been anybody in that story i like that when, when they do in black movies too where it could yes. be a black person it could be anybody yeah it's just a story Absolutely. and it, incidentally right. black or they're incidentally asian right. not some stereotypical asian oh they gotta do kung fu only right. in the movie or right. or whatever whatever right 
stereotype people have in their heads for what Asians. I just enjoyed the movie. It was yeah, just a good movie. Yeah, I enjoyed movie. the movie a lot. Yeah. I really enjoyed that movie a lot. I Then there's, a uh, here going to be a sequel. Oh, absolutely. Starring. And, and, it, and it did well, so. Starring the, the guy from Glee, who I absolutely love. Oh, he's, he's in the other like, movie. Yeah, he's at the very, he's very end, end of the movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And it's going to, that woman who's like the cousin, Astrid, mm-hmm. I think is her name, um, who's like the rich, sophisticated, socialite the movie is going to be based about her which i'm really looking forward to because i think she was a very dope character in that movie so looking forward to that yeah and they, and they left her character a little bit on this like underdeveloped i think mm. for this for the sake yeah. of that they're going to have another movie right. and then really develop her character i thought she was very interesting they're very interesting characters um i enjoyed it um good movie yes i would also love to see a movie about her friend the wacky one Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Was, um, that could be a comedy, a- a- definitely. Aquafina, yeah. Is her name in real life, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. could be a great comedy, I think, too, as well. Yeah, d- definitely, definitely. Um, so that's it for like for for movies for right now. But mm-hmm. we're gonna talk a little bit about television because we end up watching a lot more television than movies oh, because yes. we spent a lot of time on my couch <laughs> okay. watching television. <laughs> yes. Um, so the last thing that I seen that I really enjoyed actually was um was um killing, killing eve, eve yes. yeah i'm into, yes give me a second but yeah killing eve was uh was very enjoyable the first half more than the second half but um which if you don't know if you never saw killing eve it's about a a contract killer that's that's contracted by this group of people um it's more in europe um it's starring sandra o um and she's like a mi6 agent but more of a pencil pencil pusher you know, working in an office, and then she kind of like is going after this this contract killer that she's obsessed with. Very interesting, very well done, very well shot. Um, good story. Um, very interesting. Go ahead. Now I came in kind of late to <laughs> Killing Eve. I, I think I'm I didn't see the first two or three episodes, but um, but I I don't feel like I need to go back and watch no, them. No, you got a kind um, of sense. Yeah, of what yeah, I definitely got a sense of what's going on. Um. I really enjoy it, uh, and I'm kind of surprised because that Sandra O. Oh, I don't really have I, any feelings about her either way. Grey's Anatomy from yeah. Grey's Anatomy because I never really was a, a Grey's fan, um, but I really enjoy her in that role. I'm, I'm it's a very intriguing show. I really enjoy it a lot. Okay, what what other what other shows are you really into? Because I was listening to somebody else's list of, of shows, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't like barely, barely any of these movies, these shows." But I do like a show that you probably haven't seen, Atlanta, and it ended oh, up on a yeah. lot of people's lists, like almost close to the top. I love Atlanta. Love Atlanta has uh, Lakeith Stanfield, the same guy from Sorry to Bother You. He's in there, and okay. he's just as weird in every role he's in. Just about that's kind of like his thing. But the thing I like about um, Atlanta is that you can, it can go anywhere. It's mm. it's it's just an adventure and. He can go from from having an invisible car to to talking about racism to having a Michael Jackson type character, or to his girlfriend caught in in um, Drake's house trying to steal one of his coats. You know, it's just a show can go anywhere, and mm-hmm. it's just like you want to go on this this journey with the characters. It's just a, a good hang. Yeah, I've only seen um, a couple of episodes of Atlanta. Um, I, I haven't really gotten into it yet. Um, I, I definitely, it, it needs to be on my list. I'm not a huge Donald Glover fan. He kind of rubs me the wrong way. Have you seen him in Atlanta? Um, I've only seen one or two episodes of Atlanta. I think I might be on episode two of the I, first I, season. I, I see, some of the episodes are not, they, they, could be, they could be self-contained episodes. Okay. So I'll show you the ones that I think are, but I don't know. We have different sensibilities about about some okay. of the shows. I'll put, I'll put it, it would be the next on my list. Um, I'm really enjoying that show Claws. A lot. I know I'm super late on Claws, um, but I'm really enjoying that a lot. Um, love Niecy Nash. I'm enjoying that show immensely. Um, I'm loving Mad Men a lot. That, that's old. And, oh, Maybe super old. Back. I'm super, super, super back. Uh, super way back. I loved that Hugh Hefner series oh, on Amazon. I, I think I saw some of that on Amazon. I absolutely what was it called again? Love that. It was called American Playboy. I did, I did enjoy that. I, I enjoy. I enjoyed it. Was, it was kind of like a docu series. Like um, it was slicing actual interviews alongside with some um, dramatization um, portrayals of things that had happened in his life. But honestly, absolutely fascinating. Um, his life, I mean, he 
he started he started Playboy magazine really out of spite. He was working for I don't know another magazine GQ or something, and went in and asked for a five dollar a week raise, and they wouldn't give it to him, so he quit. Mm-hmm. And he started he started Playboy. Um, just a very fascinating story about his life and um, you know some of the trials and tribulations of of running Playboy and his various women throughout his life. I absolutely love that series. That was very, very, very well done. I can't, okay. remember, can't remember other TV shows I've watched this year. Um. Well, I mean, I guess there's so many. I mean, I, I like Blackish still. Oh yeah. I love um, Blackish. Blackish. I mean, they always. I guess I like any show that will like point the finger at white people and just be like white people, <laughs> you know, you like, know and, and they get away with it. You know what I don't like? Grownish. I do uh, like Grownish. I guess for me. Grownish has been very much. Oh, you're trying to compare it to the different. I'm world. definitely it's trying to compare it to a different world. It's a different and type I, of show. And I guess for me, a different world was such a pivotal, pivotal. I can't even say this. Pivotal series, in that there are so many black folks of my generation who probably the only reason why we went to college, or a a, a fundamental factor in us wanting to go to college was a different world. Um, no question about it. I think that the the reach and the impact of a different world can never be minimized. Um, but I don't know if Grownish will have that same impact on young black folks watching the show today. And I really, I wanted it to be that show and it just, eh. And now, granted, I didn't make it through the whole first season. I probably only made it through about three or four episodes. But it was just kind of a letdown for me. I think she's likable, um, the she's daughter. She's likable, yes, absolutely. She's not a great actress. No, absolutely not. And the guy, which was also, also was in a decent movie, the, the, her, the guy oh, her boyfriend. Oh, Superfly. Superfly. That was a great movie. I really enjoyed that I didn't movie. think it was great. I thought it was good. I, I enjoyed for it, what, it. For what it I was? Enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely I mean, enjoyed it. And I went to the movies and saw that. And, I definitely enjoyed that. And I thought that was a, it was a good movie. Yeah. Um, I guess we only talk about stuff we, lo- we like because we barely even touched on things we don't like have there been anything that we don't like um yeah i've, had, I've definitely had some some shows and some things because we probably only watch a couple episodes right that i guess that's true because once you start watching something you're not and gonna do we love that show i love that show manifest i didn't love manifest okay i love it, it number it, one it, i love time it, travel it, it was just okay okay it was just okay i need to talk about my absolute favorite show What's your absolute favorite show? Which I'm terribly disappointed was not renewed for a third season, and that is Timeless. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to talk about Timeless. Sorry. Timeless is such a good show, number one, because I love time travel. Quantum Leap, Sliders, um, Back to the Future, anything that involves time travel, even that movie with Blake Lively, amazing. Love time travel. So there's that. Then two, Again, I love that the black guy in Timeless just gets to be a guy. I mean, sometimes he's the black guy because they're traveling through time. But he just gets to be a guy who happens to be black. He's super smart. He's the only person in the entire world that can drop, that can pilot the time machine. Super intelligent. Absolutely love Timeless. There's a little. I think it's too melodrama. It is. It has a little it's, bit of a too it's, of melodrama. Yeah, it's a little. It's over the top. It's a little over the top. But I, I mean, I think it's a decent, decent show. I definitely watched several episodes of it, but, but then it kind of lost me. The second season finale, the ending of that is one of the best cliffhangers I've ever seen in a television show, and it was not renewed for a third season. Thankfully, NBC had the good thought to that it will be have a wrap up movie that's coming up soon. Um, my, it's, in, it's in, I already have it like written down December 20th the, the Timeless movie is coming on I'm super excited love Timeless um, I, I absolutely love it but ma- we were talking about Manifest I absolutely enjoy Manifest because there's a little like wonky we don't know what happened kind of reminds me a little bit of Lost um, which I was one of my favorite TV shows ever uh, but Manifest I'm really really enjoying it. I really like it because I kind of want to know I want to know the, the why and the how and the who and they, they don't even know what they want to be I think. Yeah, yeah like at first you think they're going one direction and then they push another direction they pull back a lot um, I just think I like when shows just go there I think the thing I liked I liked about um, Killing Eve is it just went there dude mm. start killing characters and start doing stuff later on they started pulling back and that's what I liked it less yeah don't pull back. Go all in. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Like this is your last. You may never get a, get a renewal. A yes. show that that's similar to that actually is about the same thing, which was um, Barry. I don't know if you saw Barry. I haven't seen Barry. And he's a contract killer, and they uh, go there. They okay. go there and you know kill people off, and then they almost burn through so much material. You don't know where they can go after at the end of it all. Uh, it wasn't a great show. Um, I definitely like Killing Eve better, mm. but you know I, I like when shows go there. Yeah, but so, maybe because who who's starring in in, in um and Barry so. Who's in Barry? I'm, forget, I'm, like, I'm forgetting his oh, okay. name. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm completely unfamiliar I cannot, with it. I, cannot I, forget, to, yeah. I cannot remember his name. I, I actually come into these podcasts. Yeah. I, I don't do any research. It's all come out of my head, so I always forget people's Another names. Another show that I absolutely love, and yes, I realize I'm like, I don't know, three or four years behind, is mm. The Tudors. Love. Love, 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 love. It's, fa- it's so fascinating to me. And see, I love like the historical dramas and whatnot because then I had to like go and I have to like Google the people and see who they were in real life and, and oh, did, you know, did this really happen and those sort of things. So I love the Tudors on so many levels. There's crazy like romances going on. There's the power struggles. There's the history. I love it. Never saw the Tudors. I really enjoy it. Um, but I'm surprised you didn't talk about This Is Us. I was getting there. <laughs> I love This Is Us. I love it on so many different levels. I love that it's a tearjerker. I love that it's about this like crazy family. I love, with probably the exception of Kevin, I can see somebody or myself in every one of those characters. Um like the dad reminds me on a lot of levels, like sometimes just some some things that the dad will start saying will remind me of something that my dad said. I'll start crying because, it, oh, I remember when me and my dad had that same conversation. Um, even like some of the struggles that Kate and, and her mom have remind me a lot of some of the things that me and my mom went through. Kate reminds me a lot of myself. Randall reminds me of myself. A lot of the some of the things that he went through, his wife definitely reminds me of myself. Um, well, their their whole point was to have a character for everybody. Right. And that's why right. this is us. Is us, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I do, I definitely feel that way. And I think that that's why on a lot of levels that it really tugs at your heartstrings and you're crying almost every episode because you can, you can so identify with, oh, I remember when I felt that same way or, oh, I remember when my dad said something like that to me and all those kind of things. Yeah, I mean it's definitely it's definitely a tearjerker, but I don't know they're 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 starting to lose me a little bit because mm. they're dragging stuff out and they keep going back and going back and telling stories I don't care that much about mm. as much as the, the 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 primary story, you know. I do think that they do like this entire first half of this season has been like who is, for dad. who is this her that Randall and grown up Tess are going to go see at the end of last season? So we've spent the last what like six months whatever trying to figure out who the her that they're going to go visit is. these payoffs better be good they better be good they better be good because yeah. for all this and the payoffs not be good it's like uh. yeah yes i will say at the spoiler alert please if you didn't watch the season finale now's the time to turn off but the spoiler alert is that there was some illusion that randall and beth might be divorced in the future if this is the case, I will no longer watch This Is Us because Randall and Beth are hashtag black love, hashtag black excellence. If they are not together in the future, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about some shows that eh, you know, I watched, but yeah. I guess number one on my list, um, not to have many because I'll stop watching something really quick. Um which is Homecoming. Homecoming, I watched oh, some of it. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a little weird. It's Julia Roberts, so it's you're kind of interested. Slow. It's super slow. Um, decent performances, but I'm like, where are we going? Mm, I don't, where I to, don't to, like their filming technique because there's a lot of flashbacks and flash, you know, that sort of thing. And they don't really, it's not defined well. And after we started watching the TV show, I started listening to the podcast. And, oh, okay. And, um, it's even worse than the podcast because then you don't even get the visual um, clue that, 
oh, well, now we have flashed back. You just flash back and you're just like, wait, what's going on? Um, but yeah, I, I can't. Eh. If, if we don't finish it, I'm fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to. We're, we're I don't real feel close like, to the end and, and I, I still don't, don't care. I don't feel invested. I don't really care. You know, we kind of know what's going on. So, eh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so another movie that was a big waste of time that we watched recently, actually, was th- this movie called Lobster. Oh, God. Okay. Do not waste your time okay, so and watch Lobster. What's, what's the other movie that we watched that had the similar, that was the Netflix movie where they were driving across the country? Um, This is the end or the, the end. Oh, okay. So end of the world. Okay, we got to talk, talk about both of these movies because they're both, they uh, so both are that. horrible in the same manner. So we watched this movie... Probably back... Forrest Whitaker and Probably some back other... early fall, yeah. late summer. Forrest Whitaker and I don't know, some um, other dude. There were some other people I don't know. There. Just put other random people but on. But see, okay, so Forrest Whitaker's in a movie. I'm like, I feel oh, like a good gonna be great, right, It's going to be right. a good movie. So him and his son-in-law, or soon-to-be son-in-law, um, so the son-in-law is on the phone with the daughter and is like, I don't know, all the power in like the whole country goes out or something like that. Mm. And then so he starts on this trek across country to go find her. Mm. Oh, this movie made my head hurt because it's just so it's so bad on so many different levels. Like, Don't waste your time. Do not waste you your time. If you see this movie with Forrest, you'll be like, don't, 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 don't do me. it. Don't do it. It's such a waste of time. Don't do it. But the follow-up, because this movie is equally bad in a lot of similar ways, is this movie that we watched a few weeks ago called The Lobster. The Lobster was a little bit more interesting. A little bit more. You're, you're a little bit like you're going right. to get to something really good. Right. You think you're going to. Okay. So it's starring. Uh, I don't know. Me. You got me. I don't know. So it's it's starring this guy. <laughs> and um, it's in the, the not so distant future. But one of the things is that couple, and you you can't like choose your mate. Um, so you go off to this, if you're single, you go off to a hotel and you have 45 days to partner up with somebody. And if you don't partner up with somebody, I, spoiler alert, maybe not because this is happens in the first five minutes of the movie, um, you are turned into an animal of your choice. <laughs> and he picks a lobster. And he picks a lobster because lobsters have blue blood. They live for a hundred years. I don't even know. Whatever. This movie is so bad on so many levels. But it, it, it won like a lot of awards, and people thought it was really good. It's it's eighty seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes, right. starring Colin Farrow. Okay, so the movie itself, the premise, the movie itself is interesting. But here is my problem that I have with both the lobster and. This other movie we can't remember the name of on Netflix, um, End like, of Time. This is the, this end, is the or end, or how it ends, or whatever. This is how it ends, or something. This is how it ends, whatever. Neither one of them have an ending. So I have invested two hours of my life into your movie, and I don't know how it ends. Okay, so, okay, this works. Sopranos. Okay, whatever. It works once. In a, a generation. It doesn't... These... Oh, I cannot tell you how frustrated I was by both of these movies because... How it ends. Is how... It, okay. And especially, don't name your movie how it ends it and don't end your movie. Ugh. No, nah, it, it's, it's the worst. It's it was a worst. terrible, 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 terrible movie. Terrible. I Just feel a like, waste I feel of like time. them naming it, this is how it ends, is a bigger slap in the face because it doesn't end. Yeah, I, I can't get that two hours back. Yes. I, yes. I really want to get it back. If I could sue the people that made oh, it so for my time, I would sue them. Yes. You need to pay me for yes. like like a movie ticket price. Boris Whitaker and Colin Farrell, you owe us seven ninety nine for the Netflix that we spent that month <laughs> because we, it's all your fault. Two horrible movies. Two I, horrible movies. Two horrible movies. I, that, they were just a, a waste of time. <laughs> but then again, you know, like sometimes I don't get certain certain shows and certain movies. So everybody be into it, and I'll be like, "That's the how I one feel person. about this movie that you love." Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you and your, you know, nah. your f- Nile loved it, and I'm just like, "This movie is horrible." <laughs> Point blank, horrible. I feel so mad that you two hyped that movie up, and it was horrible. <sighs> Ugh, I hated it. 
uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you didn't get it, but oh, I'm not but uh, but yeah. But this is this how it ends in Lobster. Horrible, horrible movies. All right, so this is where we we, we have a break right here, um, and I'll, I'll just say um, goodbye. I'll say all right.